today we are going to be doing something very extreme. Oh, but it's not only going to be extreme. It's going to be extremely extreme. Can you guess what it is? Oh, you looked at the title and the thumbnail? Oh, okay. That's right. Today, we're going to be jumping into extreme reactors. And we're going to be generating extreme amounts of power. I think we can all agree this was a extremely bad intro. <laughs> Uh, what am I doing with my life? But bad intros aside, as you may have noticed, I've made some roads. And not just one road, I made a lot of roads. Going all the way around the base, pretty much. Quite a ways from finish, but thought I'd go ahead and show them off before we jump into some extreme reactors there. With extreme reactors, you're actually able to generate a lot of RF and stuff. So that's why we're going to be jumping into it for that right there. And with extreme reactors, well, there are two type of reactors. You got your basic reactors, which are cheaper to make, and you got your reinforced reactors, which are more expensive. Now, the main differences between them? Well, the basic, you can only build up to a total of a 5x5x5 five by five by five area. And with the reinforced, well, you can basically go up to 256 blocks, I believe it was. So basically, you can make a really big reactor. And show it off to all your friends. You can actually go a lot smaller with the reactors. You can do like a 3x3x3 three by three by three area basically. But we're not going to go that small. I'm not going to be known as the guy with the small reactor. Also let it be known. The smaller the reactor. The less RF and stuff you'll be generating. So keep that in mind. But no matter what your reactor size is. It doesn't matter. We all require the same thing to get started. And that right there is yellorium but in order to get that yellorium what we're gonna need to do is well we're gonna need uranium which i do not have i don't have a good source of that and we're gonna need gasoline which i do have a good source of that what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and jump into a time lapse here and we're gonna get our reactors and stuff and everything else we need all ready to go let's go ahead let's get started And there we go. We went ahead and we got everything crafted up for all the reactors. Nope, just kidding. I didn't have enough graphite, sadly, for the uh, reinforced reactor, but I did have enough to make like the max size for the basic one. So we're going to go ahead and use that for right now. But yeah, while waiting around for cool coke and stuff like that to be made so I could like make graphite, I went ahead and automated the cool coke process here. So basically... These here will be emptied out of their liquids as well as the cold coke. Yeah, let me go ahead and walk you through how to do this. And I guess let me know if you know of a better way of doing it. All right, so for the first step, you want to go ahead and just throw some hoppers down here. That'll collect both buckets as well as the cold coke when it's made. That'll bring it out. Now, the way I have it set up is all the cold coke will come out the front here and make its way to the this uh, crate right here, basically. Now what happens to the buckets of creosote oil is they actually go here to uh, this fluid placer and it empties out the bucket and places the fluid. So the bucket will get sucked out down here and basically either go this way or that way up into this hopper and back into the uh, coke oven there. Now I decided to use the splitting conveyor belt here rather than one of these because I found the item routers don't actually split the items evenly and I'd always end up getting like four and one oven here and zero in the other and yeah, it didn't work out so well but having this here it actually splits it evenly so there's always two here and two here now for the fluid it'll actually get placed down right here as you can see and then it'll get picked up by the fluid collector here now what the fluid collector here does is basically it takes all the liquids out and essentially just brings it over here to the liquid trash can so that way we can just get rid of it yeah that there's how this here all works now let's go ahead let's jump on into some extreme reactors or maybe not so extreme because it is the basic small one we'll get the big reactor soon and there we go one bigger than average extreme reactor all ready to go now if we take a look at this thing here 
Uh, from the front here, we have a import and a export thing here. So basically your Yellorium, it'll all go through here. And then out here, it'll actually export this cyanite stuff, which is basically once uh, your Yellorium is used up, it'll produce that there. And you need that for making turbines and stuff, the reactor turbines. So in here looks a bit complicated, but basically the to summarize it up, this here is how much power you have. It actually has an internal storage thing, so you can store energy in here. Now these two things here are for heat, as you can see. Now this one here is basically the higher the heat here is, the more it burns through your fuel basically. So the hotter the machine, the quicker it burns through your fuel. And I actually wanted this to be higher because the higher this is and the more quickly you burn through your fuel, the quicker you'll get your cyanite for making turbines and stuff. Now the casing heat, this here is basically the hotter the casing heat is, the more energy uh, will be outputted. Now one thing to keep in mind if you do want to keep your thing cooler, unlike me, is you want to basically go ahead and take out the center block here, just have this be hollow and have like a coolant in there so like so basically steel or an iron block or something in there filling it up rather than the like the fuel rods basically and that'll act as a coolant yeah, if you do that basically it'll burn through your yellorium a lot slower but you'll also won't get as much as this so that's why i'm not doing that at least for the time being anyway so that's kind of why i have it set up like that this here basically tells you the status of your fuel, or the yellorium in this case. Basically, how much of it is used up, and when you use it up, yeah, cyanide, that's what you get. Yeah, that right there is the basics of this machine. Now, if we go ahead and head on back here, I threw a few things back this way. So, first off, the yellow here, this is actually for power output, so I'll probably throw my battery right there. And this red one here, if we take a look at this... I have it set so that way when this receives a signal, basically it'll turn the machine on, and when the signal is off, it'll turn the machine off. Now this is important because basically if I didn't have this, essentially the machine would just basically always be on, and if I didn't need power, it'd be wasting power, so I came up with a little bit of a solution to that. Basically, when I was in creative playing around, I found out that you can actually detect, um if a battery is full so what i'm gonna do is this battery i'll go ahead and put it here but using a comparator i can basically detect to see how much power is in the battery and detect if it's full and when one of these batteries are full basically it'll output a signal of about 15 blocks so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna sneak some redstone down under the ground here and just have like a wire that goes for about 15 or so blocks and then repeater at the end, and then I'll have it go right here to turn this off when this battery is full. So that way there, I won't be wasting any RF or anything like that, basically. So basically, make it just like this right here. Now let's go ahead and let's finally turn this thing on. Alright, so the redstone already has it on here. All we have to do is go ahead, let's throw our yellorium right on in here. And this thing will power on. As you can see, it's starting to fill up there. Starting to generate some RF for us, or FE. Now let's go around back, let's take a look at our battery back here. As you can see, it's filling up slowly but surely. And it hasn't set a signal yet. Okay, it just did. Alright, cool. So as you can see, it's starting to detect the signal there, and once it's completely full, again, this right here will completely fill out, if I did this correctly. And then that'll power that, and this will be shut off. I'm gonna wait around here, make sure this here works, which pretty sure it should, but let's run around here. Let's take a look. How much are we generating? It's not completely filled up yet, but we're getting around 3,000 FE per tick, so that's pretty awesome. A total of 4,000 FE per tick. Not too bad. And it should burn through this stuff pretty quickly, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and, yeah, make some more. This here is now completely full. So this is now turned off, so this should be off now, right? If I did everything correctly? Doesn't look like it, okay. That should have turned that off, hold up. Alright, so the redstone torches were uh, causing a little bit of issues here, so I had to redesign everything, but yeah, this is much simpler. So, basically, this here outputs a signal of 15, so does this, so since they're equal or whatever, it'll go ahead and... Put a signal out here that'll turn the torch off and yeah shut the whole thing down now if i go ahead and i 
put in this battery here, since the signal for this battery is not equal to 4 million and cannot like produce a signal of 15, this here is now powered on. So yeah, once this fills up here, then the power will be turned off here and shut the whole thing down. Since the last clip there, there has been a lot of AFKing and well, I got the reactor done. The reinforced reactor is all finished, all built up. And yeah, it's going to have a different purpose than the small one here. As you can tell, there's a different structure right behind here. That is going to be a turbine. Now for a turbine, what we need to do is we need to generate steam. And that is where this thing's going to come in. We're going to use this to generate steam for the turbine. Now if we go right along back here, as you can see, I basically have a water thing set up to pump water into the reactor here. That is what this is for. And with the water, well, we'll make steam. And with the steam, we'll export it through here and import it into the turbine here. But yeah, as you can see, turbine obviously isn't completed yet. And yeah, I'm going to be honest, I think it's been a solid 24 hours. So yeah, basically, I have a lot more AFKing to do to get cyanite and stuff for this here so I can finish it up. And I'll be right back. Alright, so all the grinding is complete, and I also went ahead and I did a little bit of building off camera. As you can see, yeah, I think it turned out okay. If you don't know what I'm trying to make, it was basically a nuclear plant. I'll go ahead and throw that up on screen. Yeah, I think I did a decent job of it. Although, if we go up here, the smoke doesn't really look the best from way up here though, I will say that. Gotta play around with that a little bit, but other than that, I would say it looks okay. Yeah, that's enough looking at this here. Let's head on inside and take a look at our extreme turbine. All right, so this right here is our turbine all set up and ready to go. We just gotta go ahead and connect the pipes up there. And as you can see, I set up the redstone, basically the same thing we set up for the one over there. I just have it turning both this one off and this off. And yeah, I kind of noticed something weird with the redstone. So yeah, just look at this. This is actually powering this and turning it on and it's like a full block away. Like I take that away, you see that's the light has now died there, but if I put it back, it turns back on. So yeah, that that is really weird. It's like a full block away. But anyway, let's go ahead and let's get this thing up and running. All we got to do is throw this here and we should be good, I think. Maybe. If I did everything correctly anyway. All right, so I got it all figured out and working now. Basically, there are two different types of ports. So you got this one here, which I just put in. It is a active port. And then you have this one here, which is the one we had in before, which is a passive one. So apparently you want to put in the active ports here to have it work for you. But yeah, all the vapor or steam or whatever is all making its way in here. Slowly filling up, but... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just sit here and wait for a little bit and let it do its thing. And I'll be back when it, once it starts uh, generating some power for us. I've been sitting around here for a while waiting for this thing to generate some power for me. And guess what? As it turns out, I'm an idiot because, yeah, there's a button in this thing that you got to press to actually let it generate power. This here. So right now, the coils that I have in here are disengaged. I got to turn that on. Yeah. So yeah, a little bit of a idiot moment there, but it's all working now, so that's perfectly fine. Alright, so I've been sitting around here and experimenting with the turbine here, and just like playing around with the settings, hooking stuff up to it, that kind of stuff. And I think I got pretty much a perfect thing going on here for it, because in the machine it says there, let me just show you, it says right here that it performs best between 900 and 1800 RPM, and I've pretty much gotten it to the point where it stays between those numbers basically. So yeah, let me go ahead and share the settings with you and what I've done. Like you just seen in the turbine there, I set it to basically use 196 millibuckets of vapor per tick. I have four vapor input things and I have a hopper clock that uses five stacks of items basically. If we take a look back here, here are the vapor pipes. And then here's my hopper clock right here. The five stacks of items going back and forth. And that seems to keep it like basically between these numbers right here. So 1,797 and this one here. 
as well as between 909 and 908. So yeah, those are the settings I sort of concluded that are the best for at least the one I have here, which is a 5x5x10 five by five by basically uh, turbine, so keep that in mind as well. Now, uh, one thing I did change here that I probably should mention is I did change this here. It's not turning the machine off anymore. Instead, it's I actually have it set up to basically engage and disengage the coils. That way, basically, it swaps between uh, generating power and basically speeding up the uh, turbine thing in there. Now, I do have one more experiment I want to share with you guys, and that is with the big reactor there. So we're going to jump over into a creative world real quick and I'll share that there with you. Let's go ahead and let's jump on over. And here we are. So the experiment that I did in this world here was basically when I was researching this mod, I've heard a few different arguments about like what the best way to set up the reactor there is. And so basically what I heard is clumping them together is apparently better. And I also heard the argument that the checkerboard pattern here is a lot better. So I decided to put it to the test as well as, I guess, kind of like combine them here. Basically, the Cheerio method, which is just making rings around in here. That's what I'm going to call it. So kind of clumping them together, but also keeping them kind of spaced apart. But yeah, let's go ahead. Let's start off here with the clumping method. Just putting them all in here. Now, I should mention all of these only have like 17 of like the... um. Uh, fuel rods and stuff in here so total of 17 and they're all just 11 by 11 three blocks tall basically now if we take a look in here as you can see in the clumpy one we got 0.105 uh fuel burn up rate basically and over here we have a total of 5500 uh, fe per tick basically so that is what it's like for this one now if we move over to this one here the sort of hybrid i guess the mix between them the cheerio method as i was calling it we actually get 5800 to 900 as well as a 0.103 or two ish uh fuel burn up rate and then if we go over here to the checkerboard pattern we take a look at this one basically we're getting 6300 fe a tick as well as a 0.105 106 fuel burn up rate now that's actually kind of interesting because as you can see, this here is basically the same as this here, right? So basically the same burn up rate, but this makes almost like, I think it's like five, 600 ish about less power. Actually, no, that's pretty close to a thousand less RF per tick, basically. So that's pretty interesting. And then this here, it's uh, burns up less fuel and it's kind of like a in between, basically. So. This one here burns up just as much as this, but this here produces more power. This one here is a lot more cooler, but produces slightly less power than this, but more than this, basically. So, yeah, I think the checkerboard pattern here is definitely the way to go, or at least in my opinion it is. But yeah, that's the experiment. And also with that right there, I think I'm going to go ahead and call this the end of the episode as well. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, uh episode here and hope to see you all in the next one so until then keep having fun everyone see ya